a few minutes. But sit there for a few minutes. I want to thank God for the privilege we have here to stand on this altar. I want to thank our parents in the Lord, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Adeboye. Thank you for the privilege. We want to thank God for the set man in charge of the youth over this commission. Pastor Bonga, we trust God that God will keep him and strengthen him the more for us. In the name of Jesus. I was asked this afternoon to speak to us on an interesting subject matter. And the subject matter says, standing for Christ. Standing for Christ. Was well, the subject matter I was given that we discuss this afternoon. We will agree with me that the devil every day is recruiting men. Is recruiting soldiers that will stand at the gate of the church to fight against the church. In the same vein, God is looking for you and I who will stand at the gate, not to defend, not just to defend, but also to attack him. Standing for Christ. My Bible text this morning, or this afternoon rather, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 7. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 7. It said, Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Rooted and built up in the faith. Rooted and built up in the faith. I will come to that scripture very soon. We must understand that we are in a time that the Christian faith is facing so much of challenges, so much of battles everywhere. And like I will always say that the life of a Christian is a continuous battle, is a continuous warfare. We don't cease to pray, we don't cease to warfare. It is continuous that we must wrestle. The Bible says we wrestle against flesh and blood. We must continue to battle in the journey of our faith. But we have an understanding that as believers, we come from the standpoint of victory. We don't come from the standpoint of defeat. So then, what does it mean to stand for Christ? Number one, to stand for Christ means to have the ability and readiness to defend Christ. To stand for Christ means the ability and readiness to defend him at all costs, at all times, in any situation. The Bible says in John 10 and verse 8, it's 10, 10, 10, 10 verse 18, the Bible talks about the man called Peter. The Bible says in that day that Peter, when they came to harass Jesus, he brought out something to, you know, to, to, to take up the ears of somebody. Why? Because he was standing to defend his master. And many of us as believers, we have sold our master very cheapishly, not knowing that we have sold him. The world is negotiating our master with us, and we are letting them negotiate because we don't have men and women like you and I who will rise to defend him. So to stand up for Christ, number one, means the ability and the willingness to rise to defend him whenever there is a cause to do so. And there is always a cause. There is always a cause to defend him. The Bible talks about the man called David. One day there was, a, there, there was war in the land. And the Bible says the Philistines have held the people for, for a good 40 days. And one day David showed up like you and I. And David said to his brothers, when they were accusing him, when they were saying all kinds of stupid things about him and to him, he said to them, he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? And I should stand to defend Israel. And the Bible says there was a cause, of course. David stood and defended his God. And God is calling you and I. And it is time that we will rise. In all fear that we fall into, it is time that we will rise. And not just rise, but we will rise and defend our master. We will rise and defend our calling. We will rise and defend our salvation. Who rise and defend what we believe. Number two, what does it mean to stand? Number two, it means to be rooted and grounded. Our Bible text says that rooted and grounded and built up. 
For you to defend, for you to stand for Christ, child of God, you must be rooted in Him. The height of a tree is a function of the depth of the root. And hear me, child of God, a tree can never be longer than its root. See how high this building is. If they tell you how many feet deep the pillars of this building are, it will surprise you. Why? For you to defend your master, for you to defend Christ at all costs, you must be rooted. Because you must have an in-depth knowledge of your master. If you don't have an in-depth knowledge of your master, child of God, you cannot defend what you don't know. Nobody defends what he don't know. And until you come to a point where certain things do not move you anymore, then you understand that you are gradually getting deep. Because to, 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 to defend him, my friend, you need to be rooted in him. So, so it means to defend our master, to stand for Christ, means to be rooted, to have an in-depth knowledge, to have an in-depth encounter with him. Then when you have that encounter, you have the ability to stand. Not everyone can stand, child of God. Not everyone can defend him, child of God. Not everyone can stand for him. It is those who have been rooted and established in him. That can what? Stand for him. Number three, what does it mean to be rooted? So what does it mean to stand for Christ? First Peter chapter, chapter 5 and verse 10. The Bible talks about that after thou hast suffered a little while, he will establish thee, then he will strengthen thee. To, be, to, to, to stand for Christ means to be strengthened in Christ. If I say everyone stand now, if you don't have strength, you will not be able to stand. And the job of a defender is to have strength, to stand at the gate, to defend something. So if you don't have strength to defend, then you become a prey to that which you want to defend. And that is how somebody will go for deliverance and in the process of getting, get, getting to do deliverance, he is the one that is ended, end, being ended up to be delivered. Why? Because he's not strong. No strength. No spiritual strength. So to be rooted, to be established, you, want, you need to be strengthened. Just laying the foundation of where we are. Lay the foundation of what I'm going to be talking about. We must come to the point as believers. When backsliding is no longer an option in our itinerary. Whereas some of us as believers, backsliding can still be an option. But for you to stand for Christ, then you would have come to that point where you speak like Paul. And I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. You must come to that point. You must come to that point where you will realize and you will come to a conclusion like Esther, if I perish, I perish. When you get to that point, child of God, then you have the ability, you will have what it takes to stand and to defend your maker. So let me run quickly. Because we are going to pray in a couple of minutes from now. In what area are we to stand for Christ? I'll just share three of them because of time. In what area are we to stand for Christ? What areas of our lives are we to stand for Christ? Now, this is not a fashionable discussion, but it's the sincerity of the word of God that we need for the now. Number one, area that we need to stand to defend our maker is in the area of our dressing. Please help me tell your neighbor the way you dress. Help me echo to your neighbor the way you dress. No, you're not saying it well. Say your neighbor the way you dress. Philippians chapter, chapter 4 and verse 5. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 5. The Bible says let your moderation be known to all men. Let your moderation be known to all men. Not some men. Not a few men. All men. Let your moderation be known. That question then is, what is the moderation of a believer's dressing? 
The Bible calls us kings and queens. So as kings and queens, we have a dress code. We have a dress conduct. We have a way we ought to appear for every occasion. We have a way we ought to appear. And unfortunately, some of our appearance is an apology to the God we represent. When a believer begins to dress like a gangster, all in the name of fashion, the question then is, is it representing Christ? How do you represent Christ with the way you dress? Let me tell you, child of God, if somebody mistakes your identity because of the way you are dressed negatively, listen to me, you are embarrassed and you have disgraced Christ already. If somebody mistakes your identity just because of the way you appear, you have disgraced Christ. Why? Because we are royal priesthood. We are what? Peculiar people. That is the way expected of us to dress. When a believer begins, when a brother begins to sag all in the name of fashion, the question then is, who do you represent? We are talking about ambassadors of Christ. Remember, I, was, I told you I was told to talk about standing for Christ. It is not a fashionable discussion for youth, I know. It is not something that youth love to hear, I understand. But child of God, hear this and hear it well. If your appearance does not glorify God, then you have dishonored God already. If your appearance cannot save the soul, if, you, if an unbeliever cannot see your appearance and say, when I give my life to Christ, this is how I will dress, then you have disgraced and dishonored God already. So, child of God, we must come to the point where our dressing reflects our salvation. Where our dressing reflects the God that we serve. Where our dressing can stand for the faith that we believe in. We must come to that point. And our dressing, we must dress to glorify God. Everything has to be moderate. Everything has to be moderate. Whatever you do, whatever you put on, it has to be moderate and it should end up giving glory to the Father. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Are you still in church? Ask your neighbor, are you still in church? What did your neighbor say? I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Number two, area that we can represent and we should represent God. Please listen to me carefully. Is the area of what we call doctrine. The Christian doctrine. What are doctrines? Doctrines are the foundations, they're the fundamentals of our faith. Doctrines are the fundamentals of our faith. They are the belief system of every commission, of every child of God as it is given from the scripture. Those are doctrines. And hear me, child of God, the world is killing the doctrines of the church. The world is killing everything that we believe and we hold dearly. And gradually, we are following them to believe it. I will take a few of the doctrines. I can't do so many, but I'll just take a few. Number one, I will talk about the doctrine of grace. Right now, all over the world, there are popular teachings by popular ministers of God, anointed ministers of God, who have said to you, and somehow, some of you are also believing it, or you are thinking of believing it, or you want to believe it. Right? came to disabuse your mind today, that you should not believe those doctrines, because they are doctrines from the pit of hell. They said, once you are born again, your sins are covered by grace. So you can continue to live in sin. Grace covers it all. But I came to tell you, please help me tell your neighbor, it's a lie. Please help me tell your neighbor, it's a lie. Oh, tell that neighbor very well, it is a lie. Why? Because grace is not a license for sin. Grace is dominion over sin. Grace 
is not a license to sin. Grace is dominion over sin. That's why Paul said, God, must we continue in sin that grace abound? And he says, God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. So we must not continue in sin. It is the doctrine that we must protect. It is our integrity we must protect. It is the word of God that we must protect. We should protect at all costs. We should protect it. We have a responsibility to protect it. What do we protect? We protect it and let our children know that grace is not a license to sin. Number two, they say salvation. They say one saved, one saved forever. But remember the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and what? Trembling. Don't be deceived, child of God. That one saved is saved forever. It will shock you when you get there. Some of us will get to the gate of heaven and will be shocked. But I pray for you that you will not be surprised when you get there. May the gate of heaven be open unto you when you get there. In the name of Jesus. Don't believe it. Don't accept it. Don't receive it. It is a lie from the pit of hell. One saved is not saved forever. Work it out until that day of salvation. That last day that the road will be called. That is the day. I know that message once said, the said forever, is sweet for youth. We can do anything. We have an attitude of fly as we want to fly. But while you are flying, please, calm down before you crash. Calm down. Help me tell your neighbor, calm down. Help me tell your neighbor, calm down. Just calm down. Once saved is not saved forever. We hold, we have a responsibility to uphold the doctrine that was handed over to us. The teachings that were handed over to us. We have a responsibility to uphold it. And we must uphold it. Child of God, listen to me. It is you and I that will uphold it because we have to pass it on to the next generation. And we cannot pass on that nonsense to them that once saved is saved forever. Number three is the issue of sanctification. They said there is no need to be sanctified that we are washed by the blood of the Lamb, and so be it. But the Bible says, present your body a living sacrifice. Present your body. When the Bible says, present it, it is your responsibility to do the presentation by yourself, not some other person presenting it for you. So the issue of sanctification that we set ourselves apart for the kingdom is still there. Time will fail me. Number four, the issue of resurrection, second coming, and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. These are the few doctrines I just want to share with us this morning that we must hold and we must represent it. And last, let me talk about the issue of tithing. It had become a serious controversy and some of us as believers, we even get involved in the discussions online and all kinds of theologies, all kinds of teachings are going around but the word of God is sure and the God of God is sealed and stamped forever. Malachi 3 verse 10. Bring all your tithe. All. Not some. Not, not some. Not if you like. Not when you like. Not how you like. Not where you like. He said bring all. These are the doctrines of our Christian faith. For those of you that have been in this commission for a while, these were the things that we have taught you when you joined this commission. These were the things that you have believed over the years. But over this period, people have come with all kinds of theology and all kinds of revelation to, 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 to bamboozle you, to scatter your mind that you cannot even relate anymore. God is saying that it, we need men. You standing there, you sitting down there the Lord is saying he needs you as he needs me to stand to defend the faith and number four, number three in what area do we need to stand for Christ 
in professionalism. Please help me tell your neighbor professionalism. Now say it like you mean it, professionalism. Say it well, professionalism. The Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 5 and verse 12, Daniel chapter 5 and verse 12, the Bible talks about several characteristics that was found in Daniel. Number one, excellent spirit, knowledge, interpretation of dream, understanding, ability to understand hard sentences, ability to understand and dissolve doubt in sentences. All these things were found in one man called Daniel. Listen to me. There is no anointing in laziness. There is no power in laziness. There is no anointing in mediocrity. No, no anointing. Nothing gives glory to God in that, in that level, in that realm. No, but nothing gives glory to God. God cannot be glorified if you are not excelling in your business, in your job. God cannot be glorified. Now you must understand that there is one thing to represent God with your character, wherever you are. There is another thing to represent God in, the, in your work, in the things that you do, and how you do it. Listen. If you are so intelligent, you are so gifted at the things you do at your place of work and the way you do it, nobody can ignore you. It is only but a rule. Daniel was not ignored. He could not be ignored. The king did not like him, does not matter. He could not be ignored. Why? Because he could represent God Why an excellent spirit was in him. An excellent spirit. So if you are working anywhere, you are doing any business anywhere, and you cannot be up on your feet, and you don't acquire so much information, and so much knowledge as to what you are doing to come out the best. Child of God, hear me. You are not even glorifying God. You are not even standing for God. Prayers is good. We pray. We believe God and we pray. Prayers are powerful. Fastings are good. But you cannot, you cannot replace fasting for acquisition of knowledge. You cannot replace prayers for acquisition of knowledge. You cannot. They said, when preparation meets with opportunity, manifestation is set to abound. Whilst preparation meets with opportunity, manifestation, you can never again say it. It will just appear. But a man that is not prepared... Give him 10 opportunities, he will keep failing. Why? Because he's not prepared for it. And as believers, for every lifting, there must be a preparation for that lifting. For every advancement, there must be a preparation for that advancement. Some of you, many opportunities have walked past you, not because God did not bring it. God brought it, but you were not prepared. So you could not even see it when it walked past. How do you know? For something you do not even prepare. How do you know where something is passing that belongs to you and you don't even know it belongs to you? Why? Because you are not prepared for it. You are not informed for it. So knowledge is key. You must acquire sufficient knowledge to be able to represent God where you are. Five kings, four kings, three kings, two kings. They had to call Daniel to serve them. Why? Because he had something that the others cannot give. The Bible records that he became the, 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 the president of all the princes. Is a, 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 a stranger, a captive, he became the one that was in charge. I pray for you in the name that is above every name, as I pray for myself. Wherever you go from now on, the Almighty God will put you ahead. I said the Almighty God will put you ahead. In the name of Jesus. The question then is how do I stand for him? How? I will just share three things with us. And I'm out of your way. We will pray. Number one. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. One way to stand for God. One way to stand for Christ is through the instrumentality of our mouth. For, for you to be what? Vocal. 
a closed mouth is a closed destiny. You have to open your mouth to defend the gospel. You have to open your mouth and share the gospel. You have to open your mouth and fight for the gospel. You will use your mouth. Your mouth. Some of you have your beautiful mouth. You drift with it from morning to night. Beautiful. But you have not defended the gospel by that. You defend Christ by using your mouth to speak up for him when people are pulling him down. Instead of joining the conversations that are going on, and you are going to, no, you don't pull him down. You raise him up with your mouth. And somebody's abusing Christ where you are. And instead of speaking up for him, he says, it's not my business. I don't want to, I don't want to involve myself in all this discussion. No, you have to involve yourself in the discussion. Somebody's abusing the spiritual father where you are. You say, you keep quiet. I said, no, he's not abusing me. But don't worry. Let me tell you, if you fail to stand up for Christ today, if you fail to stand up for the people that God has placed above you as spiritual parents, when your turn comes to be spiritual parents, nobody will rise to stand for you. Nobody. You have to be vocal. Help me tell your neighbor, be vocal. Help me tell your neighbor, be vocal. Help me tell your neighbor, be vocal. Number two. Second Timothy chapter one and verse seven. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. The Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear. But he has given us the spirit of power, love, and of what? Sound mind. For you to stand for God in this generation, you need boldness. Joshua had to stand before the people of Israel. He did not have what he takes, so he was afraid. Like every one of us would be afraid. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Joshua, Be courageous. Do not be afraid. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Child of God, this time more than ever before you need the spirit of boldness you need the spirit of boldness not to be afraid of any oppression not to be afraid of anyone you need boldness you need to be as bold as a lion boldness boldness and number three as I round up please maybe kindly rise maybe kindly rise Number three. Maybe kindly rise wherever we are. Maybe kindly rise. Number three thing is that you need to be powerful and fireful. Listen to me. Let me tell your neighbor. Nobody ignores light. Nobody ignores fire. For you to be in charge and be relevant and to stand for God, child of God, you need power, you need fire. Help me tell that neighbor, you need power, you need fire. Let me hear you loud and clear. Tell your neighbor, you need power and you need fire. You need it. Without power, without fire, everything you do is jamboree. You need power to operate, you need fire to operate. Paul speaking said, the words that I speak to you, they are not the enticing words of men, but they are filled with the demonstration of the power and of the Holy Ghost. Power. We are in the dispensation of power. We are in the dispensation of what? Fire. Fire attracts attention. And when a man carries fire, even the devil will look at him once in a while to take heat. Child of God, you need what? Fire. You need what? Power. The interesting thing about fire and power is that some of you even have power, some of you even carry fire. But you do not even know you carry it. Why? Because you have not taken a step of faith to lay hands on somebody, to pray for somebody, to believe God for somebody, to see the manifestation of the things you pray for. But this morning, or this afternoon rather, we are going to pray. In less than two, three minutes, we are going to pray. And you are going to hold the hands of somebody and agree with that person for every challenge the person has. 
for every issue the person came to this camp ground with that is yet to be resolved. You are going to agree with that person in your spirit. You are going to agree with that person physically. And you are going to tell God, Lord, as I hold this person and I pray, a prayer of agreement. The Bible says, when two, whatever we agree on, let's establish in heaven. You are going to say, as I pray for this person, whatever the challenge is, let it drop here now. How many of you believe it will happen right now? How many of you, if you believe, let me hear your amen loud and clear. I am not talking to unbelievers. If you're a believer and you believe that as you pray for that person you are holding, every challenge that the person is having will drop now. Let me hear your amen loud and clear. You are about to pray for the person. I want you to gather spiritual energy and gather spiritual strength. And you are going to pray for that person with everything inside of you. And as that person is leaving your hand today, right now, whatever the person has as a challenge, before your very eyes, God will settle that person now. I said, God will settle that person right now. In the name of Jesus, let your amen roll like thunder. As you are holding that person, I will pray for just a minute. I will pray. If you can pray in the Holy Spirit, you pray with me for one minute or so. Then when we pray for that one minute, then we are going, I will let you pray for that person. According to the Spirit and according to your understanding. And as you pray for that person for a few minutes, you will see some persons, this situation will drop right now. In the name of Jesus, the burdens will give way right now. In the name of Jesus, the heavy load will give way right now. In the name of Jesus, the oppressors will leave you right now. In the name of Jesus. Now lift your voice if you can pray in the Holy Ghost. Just help me pray for one minute and let us pray for one minute. Malakatiota. Arianatu. Zika patiata. Leku paratianata. Eganedesh ikapa. Libra kande boko shakatita. Malika tesia. Open your mouth and pray. Kalapatiata. Le coco paracata yakata. E canavaruku to cabale gadensa. Megosi agadensa. E lekete kutu kapata yakata. La banagata yagada legade. Sherimata. E catapalicata. Zerikata. E caparagata yandebosa. E gede regade regade. Recate de E calapando sandekede. E calecatusia palata. Yakatila cate. E que tu caparande que te lucata. E lecate yagade. Sanca pala. He broke to regadesa. He cabalagada ante leosa. He caradadadadabosa. He cande cotopa. He cataradadabosia. He alacata yacata. He banantosa. He catalicata. He break to regadesa. Mandia. He lecata yagada. La barada basa catayabada. He cate cate lecate. He caradosa. He capata. La capata yacata. He zecate rabando cote. He lagan. Le Leketura Paha, Izekate Rekatea, Merekate Paruta, Itaruta, Itaruta, La Panda Kupa Rakata, Ilakata Yakata, Manesha, Imanakata Yakata, Lekate Kutaka Yakata, Elebosa, Ibredesa, Mande Dusa, Ambedosa, Ileka Tukapa, Radarabosa, Ekerosa, Ibretosa, Palatusa, Igamando Kotuka Pate, Ele Kutuka Parikata, Ya barande bosa ile koto kopata tarada ba ikalagada ya gadagada alata parata pa ikata katata tayamando sambada ikalabadi ya ta ye kale de yada arapa tura tata ya kata samata le kete kutara pate eraba ba sabada ya dagada ya gada arama teli pata ya erokotosa ikapatosa e kete kutu kapata legadese I pray for you that you remain grounded and rooted in Christ in the name of Jesus.